Okay, so next we're gonna work on the water lily. For this, I gave the students a choice between doing a golden yellow or a magenta. Um, I'm using the Blick Magenta Liquid Watercolor. It's super economical and I'm happy with the results, the quality. I did water it down because it is so bright and vibrant. I didn't want to overwhelm um, the water lily in this picture. So I did water this one down a little bit in the cup. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to apply the uh, magenta on the page. I'm not worried about it being perfect. Uh, you know, I, I am going to be cutting out the paper. So if there's places that are darker or lighter, it's actually just going to add um, overall the value that is going to add to the character of the flower. So um, some puddle loop puddles are okay. I am going to spread mine out a little bit more just because I want mine to dry fairly quickly. While most students are not going to be doing anything else after this step, um, they're just going to dry overnight. I would like to continue the video and get mine uh, dried pretty quick outside. Um, before I take it outside though, you can see while it's still plenty wet, I am adding some more salt for texture. Um, I just love the effect that salt gives on watercolor and uh, the kids always love seeing that. We call that our science experiment. So now we're gonna work on the lily pad. The students are gonna be introduced to using a safety compass. Um, I usually use safety compasses where third through fifth grade, but this year I decided to introduce second grade and so far they've done really, really well with it. To begin, we're gonna find approximately the middle of the paper. I tell them to give the paper a belly button and with a little dot, they then are instructed to place the rivet over the dot and then we measure out, knowing the difference between um, inches and millimeters, we look for the three inch mark. And then I teach them how to make the three inch, I'm sorry, how to make the, the circle using the safety compass. After the safety compasses are put away so that we don't get glue everywhere, I then pass out some pre-cut tissue paper and some watered down um, Elmer's glue and water for the students to use. And from here, we're just going to cover our entire area with tissue paper. Um, I do glue, then paper, then glue. That seals it really well and gives it a nice sheen when it dries. And we'll talk about layers and overlapping. The students like to oftentimes make everything the same color. And I tell them to have some variety in there to let those um, colors overlap. You can see that um, my paper is bleeding. This is bleeding tissue paper, which I don't necessarily recommend for this project, unless you want green glue and green everywhere else. Uh, just bleeding tissue paper is what I happen to have with me. So after you've applied the tissue paper over the entire area and let dry, um, then you're ready to cut out the shape uh, of the lily pad. So I have students cut around their original circles. I'm gonna make this one a little bit smaller. That way I have room more room on my paper to have and decide where I want to place everything. I'm also going to sh show them that they can cut out a triangle. So from the edge, we're gonna just make a triangle that comes towards the middle and back out. And that's gonna give us more of that um, organic, irregular shape that lily pads are. Okay, so um, it, we can even call that Pac-Man, I guess, couldn't we? So once you've cut out the shape of your lily pad, now we're ready to begin making the lily. For the next step, we're going to be cutting out the petals from my painted paper to make the water lily. Now this is gonna take a little bit of time ahead to plan this and get these prepared, but I cut out the shape of a small, a medium, and a large petal. I used some scrap watercolor paper. I would highly recommend using something like cardstock or um, any other thick, thick paper that you have that students will be able to easily use as a template to trace and cut. So I need to have six of each size to have the variety to make um, my, my lily end up having the outer larger leaves, the medium ones in the center, and then um, in the very middle, the smallest. So to do that, I'm gonna flip the paper over and I'm gonna begin with my largest and I need to trace six. So I tell the students not to start in the middle of the page, but probably out towards the side. I'm gonna just quickly trace six of these. Okay. 
Next, I'll move on to the medium size. Six for the small. I'm labeling these. The reason why I'm labeling them is the students may not be able to keep up with which or which. Also, if you happen to be doing this towards the end of class and you know not all the students will be able to get these cut out and glued in the same period, you're going to want to have a small Ziploc bag that the students can write their name on. And as they cut out their petals, they put their petals in their own Ziploc bag. That way they're not getting lost around the room. Or if you're finishing this another day, um, it's easy to find them and also store them. So now that I have my petals arranged by size, I'm ready to begin assembling the lily. So on your lily pad, I'm gonna begin by using the large outer petals first. Now the website, I'm sorry, the Pinterest um, article that gave me this idea suggested using this brand, um, I guess Aileen's Tacky Glue. I only had one bottle of this and definitely wouldn't be able to have the entire class do this project sharing one bottle. Um, but in my classroom, I do have many, many bottles of Elmer's Glue Wall, which to me is pretty similar in quality um, and durability when dealing with paper. So I'm gonna be using this instead. Um, the shapes that we cut out are a little odd. They look kind of like fish. And this, this part, this back part, um, is where the glue is going to be. So if we just look at how I, we would arrange this, you're going to have six. So I kind of looked at um, kind of a propeller type design. And once I say, yeah, I kind of like that, or maybe your lily you're, you're, are too big, they're too small, it's kind of up to you. But we're gonna begin by gluing. On the back, the very bottom, I'm gonna put a little bit of glue, we don't need a lot, in the center of the lily pad. Then I move after I've done my six larger outer ones, I'm gonna then do the um, medium size and I'm going to stagger them. I'm gonna go in between the outer larger ones. You'll notice that I'm bending them, especially these inner ones. I wanna really make the sculpt, the sculpture of having them opening um, more on the inside. So I'm, I'm definitely bending and creasing them as I'm sticking them down. This one needs a little bit more glue on there. He is not wanting to stay. I'm cutting uh, to make a fringe from my one inch by nine inch piece of felt. You probably don't need all nine inches. Um, if we see that as we roll it up, we can definitely just cut that smaller. But you wanna have a fringe along one side and then obviously keep it straight on the other side, being careful, tell the student not to cut all the way through. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to put a little bit of glue just along this flat edge. That way it'll help the, hold the integrity of that shape. And I'm just going to roll very tightly. Maintain its shape. 
Okay, and if you like the way that looks, that was again a nine inch by one inch and that produced a pretty good size center for our lily. I feel like I need to um, probably clean out my glue. It's a little clogged. Hot glue may not be a bad idea if you have that handy, but um, we're just gonna use the glue wall. I'm gonna have the students hold that and watch the clock count to about 60 before they let go. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is the paper koi fish, um, which could be done instead of the water lily, or it could be done in addition to the water lily. This is a template that I found on Pinterest. Um, I just decided to take them and condense them into a, um, basically, an, uh, I guess this is nine by 12 or eight and a half by 11 printer paper. But um, I don't, I don't like dealing with the copier in the teacher's lounge. And for me to get this onto uh, my 135 weight um, <laughs> watercolor paper, I'm gonna just go with the old fashioned way. And I'm just gonna quickly color over my line, color over my lines here. And that way I can just transfer it onto the back without having to worry about dealing with the copier and the headache that it is with changing the settings. Um, I don't have a problem with it, but um, usually there's a line of people waiting to use the copier, and I don't do well working under pressure with other with my peers uh, looking over my shoulder. So with that, I'm gonna take the extra time it would take, and, and this is actually a great you know way of showing students how they can transfer an image that they wanna copy onto something else. So I'm just using a regular uh, number two pencil and I'm going, and you can see it's actually transferred the ink. I didn't really want to do that. I have a dirty piece of paper, but I, I don't mind. Um, so I'm gonna, I have my pencil lead on the back. I have the original image on the front. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna very, uh, gonna try to neatly trace over my original lines. I'm gonna move that and now I have my transfer. Um, this could be saved and used again. I'm gonna put it to the side and now I'm gonna get my Sharpie and I'm gonna go over all of my lines, make them nice and uh, dark. So these right here, these lines are, are pretty important. This is gonna be where the, the back fin connects and sticks out. So I'm gonna just put a line in there, keeping um, you know about an, a good inch, inch and a half space in between there. And then also right here, these are gonna be um, some diagonal line coming down and out and diagonal up. Try to keep it proportion on both sides. And then right here, you can see I've got an additional line. These are gonna be the catfish's whiskers. So I'm going to, I want to keep a finger space. I'm just going to draw a parallel line and kind of out until it hits the edge. Parallel line to the side and out until it reaches the edge. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take scissors and cut out all the pieces as well as cutting out here and here. So when that's cut out, it'll end up looking like this. And now piecing it together. So, um, I have seen, I have, I have tried this before with some larger paper and I was able to use hot glue, but that's not always the best method when you're dealing with, with younger students. So um, let's just piece it together and see how it works. This is gonna be the top fin, that's going to stick through it. Remember you're gonna cut, make a slit here. I'm going to stick that top fin in through the hole doesn't quite fit, so I need to make that slit a little bit larger. Rather than going uh, this direction, I wanna keep the integrity of that paper, so I'm gonna make my slit larger by going, cutting inwards towards the um, center of the koi fish. Pop that fin in, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna fold this over, and that's gonna become part of the koi fish. Um, we, again, if you, I'm planning on using watercolor um, to to color my koi fish. So I'm not gonna use tape. Obviously, if I get the tape wet with the watercolor, it'll come undone. So I'm gonna just do one staple right here 
right below the fin. And then um, you can just you can just bend it a little bit. The paper's super stiff. Again, this is 135 um, pound paper, watercolor paper. These slits, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to um, take the outer part and I'm going to let the and I'm just going to fold that under and staple that. All right, so after you have stapled, you can then kind of shape your koi fish a little bit more. I'm gonna take the fins, crease them a little bit, try to let him lay flat. These uh, whiskers that we cut out, I'm gonna kind of let them come up a little bit so they're being raised up. And from there, you can just kind of shape him how you want. If you want to add a little extra staple just to keep it from separating down here, you can. But here is our three-dimensional um, koi fish that could be added to our picture. So now it's time to add some color to our koi fish. Um, because I'm doing m many of my lilies as yellow and um, pink, I really don't want to lose my koi fish. I don't want him to be camouflaged. Um, so, you know, probably if in hindsight, maybe I would have done um, just pink lilies and not had a variety of yellow and orange lilies in there. Nevertheless, I do want to get him painted more realistic so we wouldn't see a blue koi fish or a purple koi fish. Um, and as you can see, we talked earlier about, uh, I'd like to recycle my paint cups from the Crayola package. Um, it does stink, it does emit a sulfur smell. I use this for my stuff. The students usually don't use this because of the, the smell. Sometimes we'll pull it out, but um, it's just not worth getting the whole classroom excited about the nasty sulfur smell. So I'm gonna use this liquid watercolor and I'm just going to paint some spots on the koi fish like we might find him out in nature. And um, because it's a koi fish, and um, there's really no right or wrong way to do it. He, nothing has to be perfect here. Um, some people, this could easily turn into a texture lesson, and we talk about the scales, and you can um, show them how to make scales and, and have scales covering the koi fish. I'm not gonna do that right now. I'm gonna focus just more on, on how to create the shape and um, the design that I use for this. So I'm just putting some orange in a variety of different places. Again, koi fish, there's really no right or wrong way to make his patterns. Every one of them is unique, just like us. Students will be tempted just to color the entire thing. Um, you can even use some of those watercolor techniques. Uh, this is not the most ideal um, brush for doing the little splatters, but you could just to get some different types of design in there. All right, and now he is colored. And now for the most exciting part is the assemblage. So students will take their dried painted paper background then we can decide if they're doing the uh, lily as the original lesson was planned, um, where they want to place the lily. Obviously, you'd glue the bottom and, and arrange it and place it. But if they did the alternative um, koi fish, then they might decide to glue that koi fish down too. So either one of these is gonna look phenomenal, um, whether you do the lily or the koi fish or possibly even both. I could totally see this being a phenomenal um, collaborative mural on the wall. So enjoy, have fun. Uh, as you have questions, just let me know and I will do my best to answer those for you.